this video we're going to state the alternating series test and then prove the alternating series test along with um, talking about some lemmas that are required for the proof of the alternating series test. As you can see on the screen I have it already written up that given an alternating series of the form negative 1 to the n plus k times b sub n where all the b sub n sub n's are non-negative for some eventual, for all eventual n. If we're given a series like that, then if the limit as n goes to infinity of our non-negative series terms, if that approaches zero, and on top of that, if our sequence of our series terms, if that's an eventually decreasing sequence, then the alternating series is convergent. Now let me talk a few moments about these words I kind of snuck in here, eventual and eventually. It turns out that most textbooks just say for all n that your b sub n's here must be non-negative, but that's not true. Um, let's suppose that for n greater than 13 that the, your b sub n's are positive, and also that for n greater than 27 all your sequence of b sub n's eventually start decreasing at that point. Well then, I would just take the greater of those two numbers, the 27 there, and I would start at that point and say, okay, well then I'm going to start my series at n equals 27 and go to infinity, and I want to see if that alternating series is convergent. Because really summing up the first 26 finite terms is a finite number, so that I could throw out that finite number. So if you have a textbook that mentions that your sequence, your series terms must be non-negative for all n, it's somewhat hand-waving a little bit. Now to begin the proof, we're going to talk about a corollary first of all from uh, a, probably a, a little while ago in your course. Uh, if you have a sequence of terms and you know that the limit as n goes to infinity of the even parts of that sequence, if that's equal to L, if that limit is equal to L, and if you also know that the limit as n goes to infinity of the odd terms of your sequence approaches L, then the limit of the sequence itself must be L. We're going to use that in this proof. Now into the proof, we're going to assume we're given the series uh, n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n plus 1 times b sub n. Now if you recall when I stated the theorem, that was negative 1 to the n plus k. It doesn't really matter if it's n plus 1, n plus k, or n. It's an alternating series. But for the sake of this proof, for the ease of the proof, I'm just going to do it as uh, starting at n equals 1, and uh, that the power is on the negative is going to be n plus 1. But this proof can be done using uh, the power as n, too. So this is arbitrarily chosen. Okay. And let's also assume that the limits of our non-negative series terms, as n goes to infinity, equals 0, and also that our series terms as a sequence are decreasing for all n. And again, um, if they're not decreasing for all n, if the first 26 of them aren't decreasing, if it's increasing over that first 26, then I can re-index that and start at n equals 27. One of our assumptions that the sequences of uh, the sequence of our series terms, our non-negative series terms, is decreasing implies that when I look at b sub n, it's got to be bigger than the next value in that sequence right? That means it's decreasing. And if I subtract that from both sides, it gives me this inequality. b sub n minus b sub n plus 1 is greater than or equal to 0. And this is actually going to be the crux of the proof uh, for our problem. Now at this point we're going to have to introduce another lemma. And uh, just in case you didn't know, a lemma is included in a proof to help prove the proof, actually. It's, a, it's like a sub-theorem in a way. And this lemma states that if the nth partial sum is given by the summation i equals 1 to n of negative 1 to the i plus 1 uh, times b sub i, which is uh, the series that, based on the series that we're talking about, where the series terms, or the summation terms, uh, the b sub i's are all positive or non-negative, and if we know that it's a decreasing se sequence, then the even nth partial sums form an increasing sequence. And it may not be obvious why we're asking the, to do this yet, but it hopefully by the hopefully definitely by the end it should be obvious. Now let's go ahead and prove this. And the way we're going to do it is fairly straightforward. We're just going to take a look at S uh, sub 2n. 
and we want a relationship between this and s sub 2n minus 1. Okay, so what I'm going to do is say that s sub 2n is going to equal s sub 2n minus 2 plus, and then these extra terms. Now let's talk about this for a moment. This is saying the uh, nth partial sum here, where we're doing an even partial sum, so we're uh, adding up the first 20 terms, or the first 22 terms, or the first 24 terms, whatever it may be, is just equal to, well, adding up all those terms but two less. So let's pretend that n was 10 here for a moment to take a look at this. So this is saying summing up the first 20 terms is the same thing as summing up the first 18 terms and then tacking on to that the 19th and the 20th term. Now let's clean this bit up here. This negative comes from the fact that, well, the 19th term, when it's odd, when i is odd here, we get an odd number plus 1, which becomes even. So negative 1 to an even number is positive, so we have a positive b sub odd. And then we increase to the next number, which is going to be even. And of course, an even plus 1 is odd, so negative 1 to an odd is going to be that minus sign. Okay, So this is just from the alternating uh, virtues of this series. Oops, alternating. I've got to spell it correctly. And because b sub n is a decreasing sequence, b sub 2n minus 1 has to be greater than, or possibly equal to, b sub 2n, which implies that b sub 2n minus 1 minus b sub 2n has to be positive or non-negative. So this tells me, in fact I'll scratch that out, this tells me this is greater than or equal to s sub 2n minus 2 plus 0, which is just s sub 2n minus 2, which is the same thing as s sub 2 times n minus 1. That implies that s sub 2n is increasing. So that's the lemma we want to prove. Now we're going to go ahead and use that. And I'll go ahead and jot that down here. We now have that the sequence of even nth partial sums is increasing. Now let's just take a look at s sub 2n real quick. It's actually equal to, if I were to write it out, b sub 1 minus b sub 2 plus b sub 3 minus b sub 4, right? The even indices are the negative ones. And dot 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 minus b sub 2n minus 2, right? This is an even number, plus the b sub the odd uh, minus b sub 2n. Now, we can actually rewrite this like this, and so we have this b sub 1, and then I, all I'm doing is factoring a negative out of each of these terms, so a negative, and then b sub 2 minus b sub 3. So you, if you distribute that negative, you see you get the thing up above. So I'm just rewriting it like this. And then we're going to note something here. Note, or, or basically recall, that b sub n is always going to be greater than or equal to b sub n plus 1 because of the fact that this b sub n's are, are decreasing sequence. So this business right here, that's a positive number, or non-negative I should probably say. This is non-negative, this is non-negative. So all these things in parentheses are non-negatives. And furthermore, this b sub 2n is also non-negative. Okay. So s sub 2n is equal to b sub 1 minus probably some positive number. Definitely not going to be a negative number, it's, it's going to be a positive number. So what does this mean? It means that b sub 1 has got to be at, at least the same size, if not bigger than s sub 2n. It's just got to be. So we get that. Okay, so what do we have now? We have that um, s sub 2n is monotonic right, because it's increasing. Uh, it's bounded above. It's bounded above by um, b sub 1. And you know that these are uh, positive numbers you're adding, so it's also bounded below by 0. So this gives us the nice result that our s sub 2n converges. 
So I wrote that down there. Okay, great. We have it that it converges to some number. In fact, because we don't know that number, let's let's pretend for a moment that that number is uh, s. Okay, so let's just say this converges to s. We're going to suppose that that's true. And now we'll take a look at the limit as n goes to infinity of the odd partial sums. And this shouldn't be so bad. This is just going to be the limit as n approaches infinity of, well, s sub 2n. So the sum of the, all the even terms plus that extra little odd bit there, b sub 2n plus 1. Okay, so this, this is going to be the limit of the odd partial sum. Now in this case we're going to split the limit. Now remember you can only split limits if the limits exist. So if it turns out that when I split this limit one of the limits does not exist then I can't, I have to go back a step essentially to redo my mathematics. But in this case I know that the limit as n goes to infinity of s sub 2n we're just going to call that s and I happen to know that right over here our beginning assumption was that the limit as n goes to infinity of our sequence terms there is zero. Therefore the limit as n goes to infinity of this must be zero. Aha! So this is equal to s as well. So let's see, I have that the limit as n goes to infinity of the even indexed terms is s and the limit as n goes to infinity of my odd indexed terms is s by that other lemma uh, if we have the even index terms equals a limit and the odd index terms uh, the limit equals L, then we know that the sequence itself has that limit. Thus, the limit as n goes to infinity of S sub n must also equal that limit. Well, what does this mean? It means that the summation n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n plus 1 times b sub n has to equal this limit, s. In other words, we have a convergent series, which is exactly what we wanted to prove if you hop back to the beginning of the, this entire discussion. We say that, okay, we had some series, uh, it's alternating, uh, we know that the b sub n's are positive or at least non-negative, we know that the sequence terms uh, approach zero as n goes to infinity, and we also know the sequence uh, is in, that it's based upon is a, de is a decreasing sequence. Then we know it's convergent. We just proved it.